I'm Michael Rollins, Associate Director of the Climate System Research Center at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and Associate Professor in the Department of Geosciences. In this talk today, I'm covering how Franklin County's climate is expected to change. And I'm focusing here on mainly temperature and precipitation. So how will air temperature and precipitation change as the climate warms? And I'll also cover overall projected changes in climate and their impacts, including sea level rise and snow cover. So how will global temperatures change in the future? So it's important when we're thinking about locally, Franklin County, we have to think first about how global temperatures will change. The global average temperature has changed, has already increased by about one degree Celsius, about 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit relative to pre-industrial levels, relative to how the temperatures were back before human activities warmed the planet. So as you can see in this time series, going back to around 1950, air temperatures have warmed by about one degree Celsius and future warming will be dependent upon the emissions that we create, we produce as humans in the coming decades. So climate models use projections of human activities and how they will impact uh, carbon dioxide concentrations and greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere. So there's a higher emission scenario, a relatively high or medium scenario, and a lower emission scenario. So currently, our emissions are tracking along the higher emission scenario. So under the higher emission scenario, we will cross the two degrees Celsius threshold before mid-century, around 2050. So keep that number in mind. We've warmed already by about one degree Celsius, and we know that we'd like to keep warming below about 1.5 or two degrees Celsius at the warmest in order to avoid some of the most worrisome impacts of a uh, warming world. So for Franklin County, annual mean temperatures have already increased by about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit, about 1.4 degrees Celsius since 1895. So as you can see in this chart, Franklin County's average annual temperature has been increasing, and the, the best fit line is shown there. Annual mean temperature has in, exceeded the 20th century average every year since 1993, over the last 29 years. So clearly things are warming, and we're warming more than the global average. So in the next 50 to 60 years, around the time when global warming crosses the two degrees Celsius threshold, Massachusetts average summer and winter temperatures are projected to increase by over six degrees Fahrenheit, about 3.3 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial levels. So we really wanna keep our temperatures below the two degrees Celsius threshold, they will likely warm by about 3.3 degrees Celsius just this century. And these maps here show that under the lower emission scenario, we may warm by about 3.3 degrees Celsius, about six degrees Fahrenheit. Under the higher emission scenario, our warming may be somewhat higher. I mean, these maps show under the higher emission scenario, we could warm by, let's say maybe eight or nine degrees Fahrenheit by later this century under the higher emission scenario. Really, really um, high degree amount of warming relative to what we've already seen since the pre-industrial times. So warming in Massachusetts, how warm will winter and summer temperatures become later this century compared to historical temperatures? So what these charts here show is that in the future, the coldest winters in the future will be like the warmest winters of recent years. So as you can see in the chart in the future, we may see temperatures under even the lower emission scenario by mid-century of let's say about 40 degrees Fahrenheit in winter. So the coldest winters in the future will be like the warmest of recent years. So under the lower emission scenario in the future, let's say by mid-century, our coldest temperatures will be around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, as you can see in recent years, the warmest winters have been around 36 or 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, the coldest winters in the future will be like the warmest ones we've experienced recently. Same thing with the summer. The hottest summers we feel lately, around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, will be the coldest ones in the future. If you think about 
summer's here and a really warm summer where you're saying, hey, this is really feeling like a hot summer, it's really uncomfortable, well, those will be uh, actually a very cool summer in the future. It will get much hotter uh, than what we've seen in recent years. One way we can compare how things feel right now and how they will feel in the future is by comparing our climate to the climate of other states in the region. So the projections suggest that summer in Massachusetts by the end of the century could feel like present day typical summer in South Carolina. So this is looking at the combination of air temperature and humidity, what we call the heat index. How does it feel? So depending on the emission scenario, under the lower emission scenario by the end of the century, our climate in Massachusetts may feel like something similar to, to what Delaware or Ma Maryland feels like today. Under the higher emission scenario by the end of the century, again, our climate could feel more like South Carolina. And a lot of people have traveled to South Carolina. You kind of know what it feels like in South Carolina. Let's say a summer in South Carolina. Well, that's what our summers may feel like uh, by the end of the century. So with this warming, particularly in summer, comes extreme heat. So summer daytime high temperatures in Boston rarely go above 90 degrees Fahrenheit in today's climate. And in the future, we can count those days and we can see by uh, mid-century under the, let's say the higher emission scenario by mid-century, we could be looking at somewhere around 39 days in Boston that are over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Consider there's only about 10 days each year in recent years that go over 90. Now compare that to under the higher emission scenario, by the end of the century, we could be looking at anywhere from 50, 60, maybe 70 days each year over 90. The projections for the future suggest that dangerously high temperatures, temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, are projected to increase as well. So today, in Massachusetts, there are averages about one day each year, maybe one or two days each year that are over 100 degrees. In the future, that could likely go up to one to two dozen, maybe 20, 25 days each year that are over 100. Think about that. With that increase in extreme heat, there's likely increased risks to human health. The risk of heat-related emergency room visits increase sharply at daily high temperatures over 80 Fahrenheit. So these are charts from a study that was done in Rhode Island that shows that the number of days per year with extreme heat has been rising in Rhode Island. The chart on the left shows over time, since the 1960s, the number of days with temperatures over 80 degrees Fahrenheit or over 90 or 100 degrees has increased. And you see in most recent decades, most recent years, it's gone up uh, considerably compared to the 1960s. There's also an association between maximum daily temperatures and heat-related emergency room visits. So as the temperature in the middle chart there, when maximum daily temperatures get up over 90 to 100, the risk of an emergency room visit essentially doubles at temperatures over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. In the future, there's a projection that the number of heat-related emergency room visits will increase substantially. When we get extreme heat, we see people going to the emergency rooms from heat stress. Well, by the end of the century, there could be up to a potentially a 25% increase by 2100 in the number of emergency room visits each year. Along with the warming climate comes changes in precipitation. What we like to say is, in the globally, dry areas of the globe will get drier and wet areas will get wetter as the climate warms. So changes in precipitation across uh, Franklin County, Western Massachusetts, total precipitation, both snow and rain, has increased over the last few decades. This chart showing back to 1895, total annual precipitation for Franklin County, Back around 1895, 1900, we typically saw about 40 inches of precipitation, and now that's increased to closer to 50 inches of total precipitation. And the three wettest years on record for Franklin County have occurred since 2008, just the past 14 years. So this time series, this record is, extends over about 130 years the three wettest have just occurred in the past 14 years, so clearly it's getting wetter. With that increase in total precipitation over the year or over a season comes an increase in the very heaviest rainfall events. 
So the total amount of precipitation falling in intense events has increased. So think about how many days each year where we have more than, let's say, one inch of precipitation. Well, the number of days each year that have one inch or greater has increased most in the Northeast US compared to other parts of the country. So we've seen about a 71% increase in the number of the heaviest precipitation events since 1958 in the Northeast US. So we're seeing more days with heavy precipitation, heavy rain. Now, most of these are occurring in the summer. Uh, nonetheless, with the more warming of the planet, there's more moisture in the atmosphere. When the conditions are right, that moisture can fall as rain or snow, and we get these heavy events as the climate warms. With this increase in precipitation and the heavy precipitation events brings flooding. So there have been a number of flooding events in recent years, coastal flooding in situate after a winter storm. There's been flooding along the, near the coast in Taunton and also flooding in Shelburne, Massachusetts after Hurricane Irene. So with increasing precipitation comes more wetter soils, the water tables are rising, and when you do have, let's say, pre-existing conditions that are wet soils, and then you get a heavy flooding event, like a hurricane, that can bring flooding, as we saw here in August of 2011. So total projections for rain and snow in Massachusetts uh, in the future, winter precipitation is projected to increase through the 21st century. As far as seasonally, winter is likely to see most of the precipitation increases. Summer, we're not so sure about summer. Some climate models suggest summers will get wetter. Some suggest they will get a bit drier. So there's some lack of model agreement, but all the models agree that winters will get wetter. Now, with the increase in temperatures, this increased precipitation will tend to fall more as rainfall and less as snowfall as the climate continues to warm. This is really important to think about things like recreation. Ski resorts will be will struggle by the end of the century in, in even making snow as the temperatures continue to warm. One other consequence of warming climate is sea level rise. So sea levels are rising because we're having melting of the large ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. So air, over the last century, sea level has risen by about 0 0.9 feet, you know, right around one foot around Boston. Time series here shows that in this chart. Up and down the East Coast, on average, we've seen about one foot of sea level rise in the past century. With that increase in sea level comes increased flooding because when we have higher sea levels, just baseline sea levels, even at low tide, then we get a storm, we get storm surges and storm tides, we get much more flooding. So the days with flooding events along Boston since the 1970s have increased substantially. We're seeing anywhere from eight to 10 flooding events in recent years in Boston. That's because the sea level is rising. And with that rise in sea level, that's going to continue and it's going to accelerate likely this century, depending on the emission scenario. Under the highest emission scenarios, sea levels this century may rise by about one meter, about three feet. So think about one foot of sea level rise in the past 100, 150 years we could see three more feet of sea level rise, two or three more feet uh, by the end of the century. And this will lead to a lot of inundation and flooding around places like Boston that have very, very low elevations that are really close to sea level at present. And so in conclusion, the climate's been warming. We're seeing increases in precipitation with that warming, more extreme heat events. We've seen warming by about 1.5 degrees Celsius so far here in Western Massachusetts compared to about one degree Celsius for the global average. We might see anywhere from about three to four degrees Celsius warming additionally by the end of the century. The National Climate Assessment provides a lot of good information for us on climate change impacts. There's a lot of really good information also on state wildlife action plans the Northeast Climate Adaptation and Science Center at the University of Massachusetts also has a lot of really great information. And I wanna acknowledge Professors Kalmar Carr and Bradley at the Climate System Research Center for pulling together some of this information and further information you could obtain by emailing climateinquiry at geo.umass.edu. Thank you.